I'm Gail Banks. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to explain why the Derringer is the only inline tuner you should consider for your Ford 6.7 Super Duty. All the others belong right here. Spoiler alert, the Derringer is the only smart tuner available because it has OBD connectivity. That allows it to safeguard your truck and it delivers the power that it promises. We bought and tested all the competitive tuners on the same truck, on the same day, in the same weather, on the same dyno, and over the same road, all with the same driver. So here's the competition. AFE, AG, TS Performance, which didn't even come with a label on the box, and last but definitely least, Stealth. Now, Stealth, Doctor Performance, and Diesel Domination, they're all the same box, just with different stickers. Your 17 through 19 Ford 67 Super Duty is rated from the factory at 440 horsepower and 925 pound-feet at the flywheel. But that's not what makes it through the powertrain and hits the road. You care about that. Stock, we've got 389 horsepower at the road surface. And that happens about a little after 2800 RPM. For those of you looking at buying the Derringer, the peak for you guys will be 443 horsepower for a peak to peak gain of 54 horsepower over stock and a best gain of 59 horsepower. The AFE Scorcher does both fuel and air and it results in a peak-to-peak -peak gain of 28 horsepower and a best gain of 33. Now we move into the guys that are just peeing fuel into the engine with no additional air. TSMP8, 414 horsepower. It's got a 25 horsepower peak-to-peak -peak gain and a best gain of 26 horsepower. The Stealth and all the other guys that live in the same box, 412 horsepower for a 23 horsepower gain and a 24 horsepower best gain. And then we get to AG Diesel, and this falls under the heading of, did they actually put in additional fuel? It's 401 horsepower. We found a 12 horsepower gain and a 14 horsepower best gain. Why bother? But you bought a diesel. So let's talk about torque. Stock, we've got 829 pound-feet at the road surface. We've got 892 pound-feet for a peak-to-peak -peak gain of 63 pound-feet, but even more meaningful, we've got 106 pound-foot gain at our best point. AFE Scorcher gives you an 862 pound-foot for a 33 pound-foot peak-to-peak gain and a best gain of 64 pound-feet. The TSMP8, 867 pound-feet for a 38 pound-foot gain peak-to-peak -peak, and a 50 pound-foot best gain. Going to Stealth, 863 pound-feet for a 34 pound-foot peak-to-peak gain and a 43 pound-foot best. And then we get down to AG Diesel, 850 pound-feet, peak-to-peak, 21 gain, and best gain of 25 pound-feet. So why is the Derringer kicking everybody's ass? Well, to understand that, I got to show you how it works and how the others work. Stealth, AG, and TS intercept fuel rail pressure, modify the signal, and send that modified signal to the truck's ECU. AFE alters the fuel rail pressure signal and the manifold absolute pressure signal, the MAP signal. They add air, but that's where the comparisons to the Derringer stop. The Derringer is the only smart tuner available. So what makes it smart? Well, this OBD cable. It's what separates the men from the boys. It's how we kick everyone's ass. It's what connects a Derringer to your truck's ECU, allowing it to tune dynamically, adjust its added power, compensate for altitude, hot days, cold days, keeping your engine and drivetrain safe. The Derringer doesn't just blindly squirt in more fuel. It tunes dynamically. At Banks, we call that adaptive tuning. The Derringer makes adjustments 250 times a second. The other guys have no clue how to adapt to what's going on. 
they just squirt more fuel in. By being connected to your truck's ECU, the Derringer keeps your engine and transmission safe. The Derringer monitors the engine's EGT and intelligently modulates the fueling, maintaining a safe maximum temperature. Your 6.7 limits power starting at 1450 degrees exhaust gas temperature into the turbine of the turbocharger. And it does that to keep the exhaust gas temperature below a maximum of 1500 degrees. Since the Derringer knows the temperature, it also limits its added power starting at 1450, exactly like the factory ECU. You people who go to high altitude, the Derringer senses ambient air pressure, and it's a lot lower at high altitude, allowing us to control the turbocharger to maintain added boost and power as altitude increases. Others can't tune for altitude, they just keep adding fuel. As we all know, when you add fuel without adding air, the EGTs will climb and the ECU will take away the added power, making their actual gain significantly less. This creates a really negative tug of war, by the way, between their tuner and the ECU. It wants to fuel up, the ECU is pulling back. Things cool down, it fuels up, the ECU pulls back. If you're on a long enough grade, you'll feel the cycles. Next is the diesel particulate filter regen. During a regen, the Derringer is constantly monitoring your DPF. The other guys don't even know you're in regen. In fact, they don't even know there is a DPF. Next on the list is accelerator pedal monitoring. The Derringer senses accelerator pedal position to roll in additional power progressively. This optimizes part throttle fuel economy and it still gives you max power when you ask for it and not when you don't. The other guys don't even know your truck has an accelerator pedal. And this is a really important one, coolant temperature monitoring. If you go out and you'll pull grades at high altitudes at or, and or high altitudes with a hot day, you've got a problem rejecting heat from your engine's radiator to the atmosphere and you're making big power. The Derringer senses coolant temperature to control added power. During warm-up, no power is added at all below 120 degrees. Then the power is ramped in and fully available above 150 degrees. If the coolant overheats for any reason, the Derringer starts removing its added power at 230 degrees and additional power is totally removed if you exceed 240 degrees. The other guys don't even know your truck has coolant. Now let's talk about the transmission. You know that expensive thing behind the engine? The Derringer modulates its added power if it senses excessive slip. Now let's talk about, you've got a big trailer behind you, you're starting up a grade, but you're gonna be on that grade for quite a while. The Derringer allows for 30 seconds of wide open throttle before transitioning the recommended power level for sustained trailer towing. Now let's talk about Trans Command. The Derringer utilizes key engine and transmission parameters to enhance shift performance and improve the longevity of your transmission. Because the competitors lack the essential OBD data, they're always adding power no matter what. This can cause excessive transmission slip and torque converter clutch slip. And if you think that's cool, let me tell you about active safety. The Derringer is the only tuner on the market to include a watchdog circuit. It keeps an eye on itself. When everything is working as it should, the signals flow through the relays, get processed by the Derringer's CPU, and then flow out to the truck's ECU. But if the Derringer senses an issue or loses power, it goes into fail-safe mode where it seamlessly returns your truck to stock power. Compare that to all the competitive tuners. If they lose power or fail in any way, they instantly trigger a whole bunch of trouble codes and a reduced engine power mode where all power is lost. Let me show you what I mean. We've got our first test. We've put in the Stealth Doctor Performance Diesel Dominator. There, you put in one, you put them all in. 
because it's all the same box. It's got less than $4 worth of components and he sells it to you for hundreds of dollars. It's the same guy. He's got different faces. It's kind of like this buying the steak knives at the, at the carnival or the county fair. This guy is everywhere. Get out of my Facebook, dude. Anyhow, I'm going to test his. But it's all of those brands, and it's typical of AG and TS performance. They're all what I call one-wire setups. They interrupt one sensor, the fuel rail pressure sensor, and they just piss more fuel into the engine. Let's go see what happens. I'm going to run this thing up, uh, probably in second gear. Uh, you know, it's manual. I'm at, and, and get a little RPM going. And then I'm going to flat foot it. I'm going to floor it and turn off the five volt power powering the board in the unit. Put it into manual. In fact, I'm going to put it into second. And we're going to take it out here. Uh, and hopefully there's not too many people around. So we're at a standstill. Now let's accelerate this thing up. All right, 3,000 RPM. I'll flat foot it. Whoa. Okay. Accelerator pedal is totally dead. There's nothing. Absolutely nothing. The engine just shut off. Ha! <laughs> Jesus. I've got the Derringer installed now. And if this fail-safe circuitry works and the watchdog works the way it should, and I've never done my own box either, so it's kind of, at least not on this truck. It should fail safe. It should fail independently, and you'll still have all of the stock power of the engine. So let's bring it up to speed here and see what happens. Once again, 2,500 RPM. Punch it. Whoop, still pulling, and I'm running into this guy in front of me. Didn't fail. There you are, guys. It's still, still running with stock power. I can turn the box back on. And we got a lot more power. <laughs> Turn the box off again. No failure. Ah. That's what I call a good test of a fail-safe system. So if you're looking for power, efficiency, reliability, and safety, there's no other tuner like the Derringer. Can I get somebody to take out the trash? <laughs>